Hey everyone, this week, Kate Middleton paid tributes to murdered woman Sarah Everard, and palace officials were very keen to stress that the event was not being treated as a rehearsal, although elsewhere rumours abound that Elton John is working on a new version of Candle in the Wind. Also, a bizarre series of photos were published of Shamima Begum wearing Western-style clothes, as her supporters try to again make the case for her returning to Britain, when in reality she's about as welcome as Julian Assange with a USB memory stick. But the big news this week was from Scotland, where with six weeks to go until crucial elections, a parliamentary committee concluded that Nicola Sturgeon had been telling lies as big as the ones where the Royal Bank of Scotland told investors, quote, what could possibly go wrong. You know, I've got a friend who was recently phoned by his local school and told that his son had been telling lies, and he responded by telling them that the kid must be pretty good because he didn't have any kids. In contrast, in my sixth year, I was voted most likely to lie about past accomplishments. It's true. Or is it? Anyway, the verdict of the inquiry is not really a surprise to anyone, not least Nicola Sturgeon, who says that the vote was decided weeks beforehand. This is in stark contrast, of course, to the Alex Salmon case, where the result was also decided weeks beforehand, except that Alex had at least paid for a decent lawyer to make sure he was acquitted. The Alex Salmon case in the waste of public resources was a damning indictment, and it really shows why it's important to have a separate and non-politicised judicial system. It's also, however, one of only a handful of similar examples. In Westminster, the SNP's chief whip, Patrick Grady, was forced to resign, and it ultimately turned out that accusations had been swept under the carpet for years. Elsewhere, there's a number of growing financial scandals, including a contract for new ferries that I'm guessing must be managed by Francis Ford Coppola, in so much as it's $97 million over budget and four years late. There's also Presswick Airport's dubious dealings with the US military. And there's another financial scandal where the Loch Aber aluminium smelter was given government guarantees over energy prices before the owners decided to backtrack on building a new smelter and instead used the government backline line of cash to renegotiate borrowing terms and pocket the difference. None of this is anywhere near as reported as it really should be, and every one of them is a resignation matter on its own. And yet for someone who claims to dislike Margaret Thatcher, Nicola Sturgeon does seem to claim to want to go on and on. Although Margaret Thatcher was forced to resign not long after making that quote. For now, Nicola continues to blame Westminster and the English press for her accomplices' mismanagement, taking out court injunctions and courts presiding over by Sturgeon supporters and SNP apparatchets, which frankly have about as much jurisdiction in England as they do over Narnia. You know, if Nicola ever does get her way and talk of a hard border with England comes up again, her walls can have a lot more in common with the Berlin Wall than Donald Trump's one, albeit Trump will still have a golf course to the north of it, and in the case of Nicholas one, Berlin will probably pay for it again, much to the annoyance of most people, though to the surprise of no one. Anyway, see you next week, if you like these, click subscribe.